everybody. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. So we are in my kitchen today because we are going to be doing some cooking together. We are going to be cooking mouse <coughs> pizza. So I am going to be cooking it and you can follow along and you can cook with me. So the very first thing we need to make sure we do is wash our hands. It's really important to make sure that our hands are nice and clean so it's really hygienic. Another thing we need to make sure is that all the equipment that we are using, our bowls, our scissors, our knives, things that we are going to be chopping with, our graters, we're going to be doing some grating today. Make sure that all your equipment is really, really clean. That is very important. Okay, so make sure you have washed your hands. Mr. Whiteford has washed her hands and you will see a little video in the corner showing you Miss Whiteford washing her hands so mine are nice and clean. Another thing Miss Whiteford has done is tied her hair up. I'm not going to touch my hair because as soon as I do I have to wash my hands again but as you can see it's tied up so that it's out the way. We don't want food getting in our hair and we don't want hair in our food because I don't want a hairy pizza. I don't know about you but I don't. So let's begin. Our first step is to make sure we have all of our ingredients. So one of our ingredients that we need is our flour and I've got strong white flour that looks like this but just a white self-raising would also do. We also need what we call instant yeast and it comes in a little packet like this and it looks something like this okay so I'll show you in a minute how much we're going to need of this but these are all the ingredients to start off with so flour yeast we're going to need a little bit of oil and if you can get olive oil that would be better so we've got a bit of oil and then we are going to also need things for our tomato sauce so again you're going to need to use the oil for the tomato sauce you are also going to need tomato sauce okay any kind of tomato sauce will do you can find some ones that are actually labeled as pizza sauce so a plain tomato sauce okay or you can even make your own I'm doing it where I bought it just to make it a little bit quicker but you can make your own just by cutting up some tomatoes blending them up and mixing them in a saucepan so you definitely need your adult to help you with this you mix it in a saucepan as it heats up it all turns into a sauce we need to do lots of mixing you might need to add some seasoning, so some salt and some pepper. But easier option is to just buy yourself a ready-made tomato sauce. And then you're going to add some seasoning and some herbs today to make it a little bit more exciting and a bit more yummy. Okay, so those are all the ingredients for our tomato sauce. The next bit is for our topping. What's going to go on top of our pizza? Okay, so we're going to need... Miss White has decided to make a super cheesy one because we are doing a, a mouse pizza. So I thought, well, it's got to be cheesy because mice like cheese. So I've got some mozzarella. I've got some grated mozzarella. And I've got some mature cheddar cheese. It's one of Miss White's favourite types of cheese is cheddar cheese. So I thought I'm going to make it extra cheesy. So this one is a block of cheese and therefore we are going to need to grate our cheese. So that's one of our skills that we're going to be looking at today. So those are all the ingredients you are going to need. The one last one, which Miss Whitey forgot to mention, is our herbs. So I've got an Italian herb mixture, which has just got a few different types of herbs in it. It's got some basil in it. Um, it's got some oregano in it, it's got some sage in it and parsley, lots of different types of our herbs and that will just make our sauce taste that little bit nicer and a bit Italian. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to measure out our ingredients. So Miss White has got her recipe in front of her, so the first thing that she's going to need is 300 grams of flour. So Miss Whiteford has got a digital scale and that looks like this. 
this one that I can put into my drawer. It's very clever. Fold it up and it can fit in a drawer. But digital scales look different. Some of them are a flat surface and you pop it on top, but the dial will be looking like this. So you can see all the digital numbers, all those digits coming up as you measure it. Another type of scale you may have is one that looks like this. And this has got a scale on the front, all the digits that you need to read. So both of them, you may need an adult to help you just to make sure you are have read the scale correctly. This little dial here will move, oopsie, will move. This will move when you have measured, you'll put more and more ingredients in and then it will move the dial and it will show you how much you have measured. So those are the two different types of scales. And as I said, Miss Wipe is going to use her digital scales, okay? So the first thing you need to make sure you do is when you are using your scales, is to make sure you have it on a flat surface. If you have it on an uneven surface, a wobbly surface, then you're going to find that it's not going to measure your ingredients very well because you are going to have it on an uneven surface and it's going to start to measure things when you haven't even put anything in it. The other thing you need to make sure is that you put the bowl that you would like to put your measuring ingredients in onto the scale and set it to zero, okay? So you have to put it on our flat surface and then I have to press my dial again and it will set the dial to zero. And that just makes sure that when you are measuring, you are measuring accurately. You are going to get exactly the right amount of the ingredients that you would need, okay? So I am going to put my flour in. I wonder if you can remember how many grams Miss White had just said it was going to be. It was 300 grams of flour. So I'm going to pop this in here. I'm going to take my time, I'm going to use both hands, holding onto our flour carefully. And then I'm just going to pour my flour, as you can see, into, set this to zero again. Ooh. Make sure it's on the right unit. It changed itself to milliliters and I want grams. Here we go, so we're going to pour it in and take your time pouring it in and that's how you're not going to get all the flour everywhere because flour does get all over the place. So you've just got to be a bit careful. So pouring that in, looking at the dial all the time to make sure that you're checking. So I'm on 280 at the moment. So who can tell me as a challenge, how many more grams do I need? I'm on 280. So I'm gonna add the rest. There we are, we're at 300 grams. And this one was actually on 302, so I'm gonna take a pinch out. Pinch out. Oh, get my ball. Pinch out, there we go, we are on 300. And I'm going to show you now that we are on 300. So we've got our flour in our bowl and we are on 300 grams exactly, okay? So we, when we were pouring it, when Miss Wipe was pouring it, trying to get to 300, I stopped at 280 and I asked you, how many more grams do I need? And the answer was 20, 20 more grams I needed to pour in. And as you saw, Miss Wipe just did it a little bit too much, so I just took a couple of pinches and pop them back into the bag to make my accurate 300 grams. So that's my first measurement done. I'm now going to move the bowl. I'm going to reset my scales so I'm ready for when I need to measure my next ingredient. And this flour is going to need to go in my big yellow bowl ready for my mixing all my ingredients for my dough, for my pizza dough. So I'm gonna pour that in there so that I can keep using this pink bowl to measure all of my ingredients. Again, I am making it accurate because I'm using the same equipment. So I'm gonna pop this in here first. Again, I'm gonna take my time because I don't want any of the flour to go all over the place because flour can get everywhere so easily. You may have a little bit left over in your bowl and that's absolutely fine. Just brush it out with your fingers as much as you can. There you go, so you've got your flour in your mixing bowl ready to mix the rest of your ingredients. So my next ingredient 
that I am going to need to put in is my yeast. And as I had shown you before, we don't need our scales because all we need is our teaspoon. We need one teaspoon of yeast. And I showed you before <clears throat> that the yeast was in a little pot so that I can scoop it out. So I'm just going to scoop it out and make sure that I have got a teaspoon. And as you can see, Miss Whiteford has got her teaspoon full. So that is now going to go into my yellow bowl, my mixing bowl for my ingredients. I'm sprinkling it around so it's spreading around the flour. Then pop that aside. Then what I need to do is it's something called making a well. And it's making a dent in the middle of your mixture of your flour and your yeast. So I'm just going to show you my flour and my yeast in the bowl. Now what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to spread the flour so it goes into the middle and the yeast. And then it, this is what's called making a well. So you make a little dent. It looks a little bit like a nest. A little bit like a bird's nest. So you've got the middle like that and you made a well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with that well is I'm going to add 200 millilitres of water. 200 millilitres. So that is how we measure liquid in millilitres. Okay, so I am going to use my measuring jug. If I bring it closer, you can see the scale. I know it's got a bit of a reflection on it, but you can see it here. This is my litres, okay, and my millilitres. And this side is my ounces and my pints. So I am going to need to have 200 millilitres. So that's going to that line there. So I'm going to get some from the, my tap. And it does say it needs to be warm water, not hot water, but warm water. So I'm going to put it in the middle of my hot and my cold, just to give it that warm. And I am putting my finger under the tap. Again, you can ask the adult to help you if you can't um, quite reach the sink or if you're a little bit worried about it being a bit hot. But if you put the dog in between the two, then you should be absolutely fine. So and I'm bending down, looking really carefully to make sure that I have got enough. And then I am going to put it flat on a surface. And this is what we call making it level. So I put it down here and I need to have a little look. So Miss Whiteford's gone a tiny bit over, so I just need to pour a little bit out into my sink again. Have a little look. Oh, it's doing a bit of a wiggling because I've moved it around to stop it from wigging out. So if you put it on a flat surface, then you will see it will stop it wiggling around. There we go. So I'm very happy with that. I think that works. So let me show you my... 200 millilitres are in there, okay. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour that warm water, not hot water, not cold water, warm water, into that well I was telling you about. We called, also called it a nest because it looked a little bit like a bird's nest. That well in that bowl I am going to pour this water into. So I'm going to bring you, whoops, I'm going to bring you over. Okay, so Miss Wipe is going to pour it into the well and I will show you. I'm going to pop my jug down. Here we go. So I've poured it into that dip, into that well, straight into the bowl. Okay. And the next thing it says I need to add is my oil. So let me check my recipe. So this is what Miss Wipe is doing the whole time, checking the recipe, double checking how much the recipe is asking me to put in. So it says oil needs to also go in there and it says a tablespoon of oil. So I'm going to get my tablespoon. So last time I had a teaspoon to measure out the yeast, which is our smaller one like this. And then my tablespoon looks like this. Okay, so I'm going to pour. I'm going to be really careful. You might want to do it over the sink just to make sure it doesn't spill. And then you want a level, here we go, you want a level spoonful, tablespoonful of oil. 
and then I'm going to put it in the same place as the water into that dip into that well. So I'm going to pour that in, make sure all of it goes in. Okay. Then I'm going to need a spoon, a big spoon. So Miss Wife is going to get one of her big spoons. Remember what we talked about, making sure that everything is nice and clean. I just haven't rinsed this one, so I'm going to make sure I've rinsed my spoon. Then I'm going to grab my tea towel and just dry it a little bit. So we don't need any more liquid in our mixture. There we go. So that's my spoon, and I'm going to do some mixing now. So I'm mixing all of my ingredients that I just put into my big yellow bowl. I'm going to be mixing those ingredients together. Let's see if I can bring you over so that you can watch Miss Whiteford doing all her mixing. Okay, here we go. So you're going to mix all of that together. Mixing all of those ingredients together. So this is going to help us to form our dough for our pizza. So the yeast in there is an ingredient that's going to help make our yeast, oh, make our dough, sorry, rise a little bit. Okay, so that's why we put the yeast in. So in a minute, once I've done all my mixing with my spoon, I will then be thinking about how I can do my mixing with my hands to bring my dough together. And you may find that it's a bit of a stickier dough so you just need to add a tiny bit of water, okay? Down a bit. There you go. So you just need to add a tiny bit of water if it's starting to get a bit sticky, um, a tiny bit of flour if it's getting a little bit sticky. So let's have a look, let's get my flour from over here. And then in a minute, I'm going to need to put my dough onto my clean, dry surface. And that is where I'm going to do some kneading. And that's another skill I'm going to teach you today, which is kneading, which is bringing the dough together into a big ball. And you have to knead all the ingredients together to make them work. And then with this type of dough, it does need to be left for an hour and that in that time what your dough will do is it will rise it will get bigger so what we are going to do is I'm going to bring you to this point I'm going to show you because you're going to cover it with a tea towel and put it inside you can either put it in the fridge or just put it on the side if you've got space in your fridge then brilliant otherwise don't worry just pop it on the side that's what Miss White is going to do just pop it onto the side <clears throat> but you must make sure you cover it and then we will talk about how we can make our sauce and then I will set a timer to make sure that we are letting it rise for as long as possible. So I'm now using my fists like a punch. I'm kind of punching the dough. I'm not doing it really tough. I'm not punching, 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 but I'm just punching lightly down onto my dough. This is also kneading it. And it's just making sure that all the ingredients are all together. I think I'm happy with that. <clears throat> I can see that all my ingredients are coming together really nicely. So I'm going to move my yellow bowl out of the way. That was my handy mixing bowl for my dough. I'm going to move my spoon out of the way and then I'm just going to put a little bit of flour onto my surface. Move this one out of the way. <clears throat> okay, so now my flour is just going onto my surface like this. Okay, and then I'm placing my dough that I've just kneaded in the bowl, I'm placing it now onto the surface to knead. Okay, so this way you now you're going to use the palms of your hands <clears throat> to squish it down. 
And then what you do is you fold it over like this. So you stretch it over and fold it. And then you do the same again. <clears throat> you knead it with the palms of your hands, kneading it. Good, like that. You do have to put some work into it. You have to push, push your arms down, push your hands down, put a bit of work into it. But it'll be great once it's all done because it would have all mixed together and all kneaded together. <clears throat> There we go. So now what I'm going to do, I've kneaded that for a little while. I'm then going to put it into a bowl. And as I said, I'm going to put a tea towel on the top to make sure it's all protected. And it also helps it to rise when you put that tea towel on the top. So I'm going to use the bowl that I measured my ingredients in because it's only got a bit of flour in. Pop that in there. And then I'm going to pop my tea towel over the top like that. Okay, just like that. Okay, so then I'm going to set that aside and I'm also going to set a timer. Let me bring you back over to here. Okay, so my dough is just here. I'm going to move these out of the way. I'm going to use those in a minute. Okay. And then I'm going to set my timer, okay? So I pop that in front of my bowl. This is my dough here. Pop that in front and I've set it for one hour. Okay, there we go. So now that's starting to count down. So while we're doing that, I'm gonna put my big bowl into the sink. And then because I've got quite a lot of flour and dough on my hands, I'm going to wash my hands again. It's important to make sure we're keeping that our hands nice and clean and we don't want to end up putting bits of dough into our sauce so that's what it's going to wash our hands. Nice good bit of soap. Think about all the different things you need to do so get those palms, get the back of your hands, in between your fingers, get those nails, scrubbing, scrubbing. Good, get all that dough because that dough can get really sticky on your hands making sure your hands are really nice and clean. I'm using some warm water. There we go. Then I take most of my water off by just splashing my hands into the sink. And then I'm going to take my other tea towel and just dry my hands. Okay, <clears throat> so while that dough is beginning to rise, we will make our sauce together. And then we will need to stop for a little bit because obviously it does need a whole hour. Okay, so we will wait and then I will come back and show you how to put it all together once we've made the rest of it. So let's move on to our sauce now. Right, so now we are going to be making our pizza base sauce with our passata tomato sauce. So you're going to take your container and you're just going to sniff it. You might have a can. So you're just going to either get, you're going to need an adult to help you, you're either going to need a can opener or it might be a ring pool and you pull that open, but you will need an adult to help you open one of those or a jar. You might have a small jar. Miss Whiteford's is in one of these packs, a container, a, and I'm going to just cut the top of this container just here so that it's going to be able to be poured. So I've got to be really careful, watch how I'm holding my scissors and putting it away from me as I cut it. Now I'm going to pour my sauce into my bowl. I'm going to bring you over so you're a little bit closer. And again, you can see what's going on. Drop here like I did last time. Move it downwards. Okay, so I've got my bowl. Okay, nothing in there. Completely empty. Then I'm going to pour my sauce into here. So it does say that I need 200 milliliters. So I'm going to get my measuring jug again. Okay, remember we need to keep that level, which means it needs to be left on a flat surface. And then I'm going to pour. Again, I'm going to bring myself down a little bit just to make sure that I can see how much is being poured. So let's pour that, keep pouring that. Give, me, give it a big squeeze, nearly there. There you go. So that 
is the right amount of sauce, 200 millilitres. That's the same amount as the water that we needed. So now I'm going to take my bowl again. Oh, smells delicious. Miss Whiteford loves tomato. So oh, that smells delicious to me. So I'm going to pour the sauce into the bowl, just like this. And remember what I said before, you don't need to be warming this sauce up with anything because you are going to put it onto your pizza and it'll get warmed up in the oven. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of water into here, really little bit, just to make sure that I've got all of my sauce into my bowl. So it's only a really tiny bit of water just to pick up the sauce, because the sauce is quite thick. There you go, and poured the rest in. So that is my first step of making my sauce. So it's just pouring that tomato sauce, whether it's your ready-made pizza sauce, that's absolutely fine. You can have a ready-made pizza sauce, or it might be that you've got just what I've got, your passata sauce, and then you're gonna just pour it into your bowl. And the next thing I need, which is what I'm trying to find, here we go, is our herbs. So I'm just going to pop a few herbs into this just to make it a little bit more yummy, a little bit more flavoursome. So into just your plain bowl of tomato sauce, I am going to put, this is brand new so I just need to open it up, Ooh, it's called Italian herbs. And as I said, it's a lot of mixture of different things like parsley and basil, and it just adds a little bit of flavour. You don't need too much, so I'm going to do half a teaspoon. And if you remember, our teaspoon is our small spoon like this. I'm just going to tap a little bit on there. You don't want too much, you don't really want it to be overpowering. A tiny bit more. There we go. If I make it level, there we go. So as you can see here, I've got half a teaspoon. There you go. And I'm going to just sprinkle it into my bowl now, just like that. Okay, then I'm going to get a spoon. So I've got my spoon from before in the sink. So I'm just going to rinse it off, get rid of all that dough so that I can use it in my sauce mixture so I can mix it all around. So I'm just giving it a quick wipe down, quick rinse, make sure all that dough is off, make sure it's nice and clean. Get a tea towel again, give it a good wipe down. There you go. And then we're just going to mix this all together, okay? So it won't take very long, just mixing, mixing, mixing. There you go. There we go, mixing it all in. Don't worry too much if there's a bit sticking to the side, you can bring that down. Mix, mix, mix. And the other thing I'm just going to get is I'm just going to get some salt and some pepper. Salt and pepper are what we call seasonings, and they help to add that little bit more flavour. So I'm going to add a bit of pepper. There we go. Shake it out, make sure it's all in there. And then I'm going to add some salt. There we go again, shake it out. And then I'm going to mix again to make sure all of those ingredients have mixed together properly. There we go. And then I've got my sauce ready to go when my dough is ready. So my sauce is all ready and finished. So we put our tomato base sauce in there. We put our Italian herbs in, and then we just put a little bit of simple seasoning of pepper and salt. And that is how you make your sauce. Very simple. Okay, next we are going to start to prepare our toppings. Right, welcome back everybody. Now we are going to put all of our ingredients together. So our dough is very nearly ready. It has got one minute and 20 seconds left, okay? So while that is still just counting down, I'm gonna get my surface all ready and prepared. So just like before, I've wiped it all down. It's nice and clean, okay? And now you are going to pop a little bit of flour Okay, our flour onto our surface to make sure that our dough doesn't stick and you're just sprinkling it on. Okay, I'm going to bring you over here in a minute. So you're going to sprinkle it on. Okay, 
So I'm going to bring you over a little bit closer. So we've sprinkled our flour onto our surface. As you can see around it, we've got all of our ingredients ready to go. Okay, we've got 26 seconds till our dough is ready. So I've placed this flour, I've sprinkled this flour onto the surface so that the dough doesn't stick. I've also cleared my surface of everything else apart from my toppings that I'm going to need. Okay, so all of these are all my toppings that I'm going to need to use on my dough. And then I can lay my dough out. Perfect, it has finished. So our timer is now up. Our dough has been rising for one hour, 60 minutes. And I can tell that it has definitely got a little bit bigger. It's not going to get ginormous, but it's definitely risen slightly. Oh, and it feels nice and warm. It is a bit sticky, which is fine. So I'm just gonna make sure I pick all the bits up that I need. And then that's why we've got our floury surface so that we don't get our dough stuck to us or stuck to the surface. So we wanna make sure we have all of our dough for our pizza. Okay. So pop that on that surface here. Again, you are going to do, do a little bit of kneading. You may not need all of that to begin with, so we are going to spread it out a little bit. Miss White is just grabbing her rolling pin. Find my rolling pin. Here we are. Uh, one thing this white wasn't prepared with, so make sure you do have all your equipment ready to go. Miss White had just forgotten her rolling pin. Right, so getting your rolling pin ready. You are going to need to put a little bit of flour on, so I'm going to get my little bowl of flour out, ready to go. Pop that here and just rub it over the top of my rolling pin. Okay, so that again, we know that the dough is not going to stick to it. Then I've got handles either the side of my rolling pin. You might not have handles, that's fine. Some of them you just hold onto this bit and then you roll it but this one rolls as I move it, which is clever. So we're just gonna roll it out a little bit, but we're going to separate our dough first because we're gonna need our base of our dough. And then we're also going to need part of our dough to do our ears of our mouse. So here, this is my first part. I'm gonna roll it out with my rolling pin. Take that bit roll it out so it's going to be a smaller pizza it's not going to be the same size pizza that you may buy in the shop it's going to be a smaller one just bring my dough together there we go okay just make sure it's as even as you can get it you don't really want some sides to be thicker than others because otherwise it will all cook at different rate and then you'll have some of your dough cooked and some of it not quite cooked enough. And that's not going to be very delicious, is it? So we need to make sure that it is nice and round. And that it is as even as we can get it. Don't worry if it's a little bit odd on the edges. A little bit rustic. That's absolutely fine. Okay, make sure the flour so it's not sticking. And that should be absolutely fine. So that's our base of our mouse. Now what I'm going to do is just set that aside and then I'm going to separate, I won't, I might have a little bit of dough left over and that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to separate into two little balls and these are going to be your mouse's ears. So again, you're going to roll them, flatten them with your rolling pin. Probably don't even need this much, even little, because as you roll it out, as you saw with this one, it gets so big. So here we go, use the palm of my hand, palm of my hands to flatten it out a little bit first. There we go, and then use the rolling pin. You don't need to flatten these ones too much. Depends how big you want the mouse's ears. All right. And then 
this one. Got to make sure it does look like a mouse. I want it to look like a bear, looking a bit like a bear, so I might need to, there we go, roll this one out a little bit more, make them a little bit rounder. Oh, that's better. Okay, and then I'm just going to pop it behind, behind like this. And then I'm going to give it another little roll so that they move, they mix in together. Right? There we go. Oh, shake that a little bit. Okay. There we go. So now, let me move you and you will be able to see the shape of, whoop, there we go, the mouse. Eek, eek. That's the mouse's head made out of dough. So I've got my main base of my pizza. Okay, I'm going to add a tiny little bit of oil. Not pour it into that. Just to make sure that those two bits of dough do stick together. That one seems quite sticky, which is good. I think it's got a little bit too much flour on it, so it hasn't stuck down. And then let, you can join it together. There you go. So hopefully, they should be stuck together now. Right, and now we can add on our, our toppings. So the first topping we need to add, who can tell me what the first topping, have a think about which one's going to go first. Is it gonna be the grated cheese? Is it gonna be the mozzarella cubes and cuboids? Is it going to be the cheddar, the grated cheddar, the grating that we did, the skill that we practiced? Or is it going to be maybe our carrots and our tomatoes that we chopped up? Or is it going to be the tomato sauce? What's going to be first? Have a little think. So it is, it's going to be the tomato sauce. Okay, so just mix together your tomato sauce once again. Just making sure that you've got all those herbs mixed in. Then we're going to take a small spoonful here and then we are going to dribble it on the top you are then going to need to get a little bit more and then you are going to need to get a tablespoon so i'm just going to get her tablespoon out a tablespoon like this so that you can spread the sauce all around let me put my lid back on my oil Spread that sauce. Oh, how yummy does that look? Spread that sauce all around so that you've got your pizza base. I like a lot of sauce, so I've added quite a bit. There you go. Then the next thing you're going to add is your grated cheeses. So you mix a bit up. So I'm putting the cheddar down. And I'm going to put the mozzarella down. Now, mozzarella is the main one that you would put on a normal pizza but as Miss Wright had said at the beginning I wanted to mix a bit of both because I thought I love cheese and I also thought it worked because we were making a mouse there we go so maybe add a tiny bit more cheddar on top of that told you I like lots of cheese there we go so that's a very cheesy pizza and then we haven't even added on our mozzarella so here just adding some bits of mozzarella. I'm gonna just put some dotted around, squish it down. As I said before, I haven't used all of my pieces of mozzarella, have I? There we go, that'll do. Okay, and then I'm gonna add on my eyes. Hopefully this is gonna look good. I'm looking forward to seeing it all together. My nose. And my whiskers, which are my carrots, there we go, flip those around a little bit, just put them along the bottom I think, there we go, and then I'm just going to add a tiny bit of sauce just on the ears as well 
just in the middle. So it's like the inside of the mouse's ears. Just like when we did the finger puppets, we did that little inside bit of the ears. There we go. And then I am going to add a tiny bit more shoes. a bit more cheese onto my ears I'll do one cheddar one and one mozzarella one mix it up use my cheese there you go oh I'm really pleased with that a bit more cheese up there there we go make sure that I'm all in the right place there we go I'm going to move my whiskers so that they're positioned the way I want them So he is looking a teeny bit like a bear, but I'm still pleased with him. So let me show you from front on my mouse pizza. So the next step is you need to get a baking tray and then you put something on it called baking paper and this will stop it from sticking. So you just put some baking paper here on top of your baking tray so that it doesn't stick and then you've got to move your pizza onto your baking tray and then we're going to pop it in the oven which you definitely need an adult's help for so this is the final stage we're going to pop our pizza onto our baking tray pop it into the oven Hi everybody, right now we are going to be putting our pizza into the oven. So our pizza is on our baking tray, ready to go. Some of you may have different types of ovens, so I've got a fan oven. And with my fan oven, I'm going to be putting it on 220 degrees Celsius. If you've got a gas oven, you need to put it on gas mark 9. And if you have got a normal oven, you want to put it on 240 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to move my dial now so that it goes to 220. 220, that'll do. Let me show you. We've got our dial here, and that's on 220. Okay. So you do need to let the oven warm up a little bit. Mine warms up very quickly so you'll just have to ask your adult how long does your oven take to warm up and you should be doing this with an adult anyway okay so you need to make sure that you've got your mouse ready to go on your baking tray okay ready with your parchment paper or your baking paper and then we are going to pop it on the in the oven once it has warmed up so one thing this white bit is going to get is you can use a tea towel Adults can use a tea towel to put your baking tray into the oven, but the better thing to use is our oven gloves, like this. Okay, because this way it really protects your hands, but you should not be doing this. Your adults should be putting your pizza into the oven and making sure that you have an adult with you the whole time. Okay, so. We are going to be able to put our pizza in now. As I said, mine doesn't take very long. So when that light turns off, it is warm up. In total, you're going to need to put it in for about eight to 10 minutes, depending on how powerful your oven is. My oven is quite powerful. So I think I'm gonna time mine for about eight minutes and check on it. And then I'm going to see if it's had enough time to do its thing, to cook away, and I want it a little bit crispy on top, a little bit brown, and I want all that cheese to have melted. Okay, so I am going to make sure it's got eight minutes. I'll have a quick check on it, and then I might want to have it for the full 10 minutes, but you shouldn't need it much longer than 10 minutes in total. So our 10 minutes in total, okay? So we're just waiting for that light to turn off. 
and then we can pop it into the oven. I hope you have enjoyed making this pizza because I've absolutely loved it. I really enjoyed all the different skills that we used. Who can remember some of the different skills that we used? So we used, we grated some cheese, so we had to use a grater, so grating was one of ours. We had to mix the dough, we had to use our muscles, didn't we? And mix that dough in. So mixing was another one. Something where you had to do this, and you had to do your small punches. What was this called? It was called kneading. So kneading was another one of our skills. We also mixed in the sauce, so we used our mixing again. We also had to grate, we grated our cheese. Okay, so we used lots of different ones. We chopped, we cut. Okay, so all these different skills that you've been using today are really important skills to learn when you're wanting to cook things. They're all these different types of skills. Okay, very important. So now, I am going to pop mine in the oven now. So I've got to be very careful that my pizza is on its tray. Then I need to make, care, make sure that I am being careful and that my oven gloves are on. So I have to put one hand in here, one hand in here. Remember, your adult should be doing this. You can watch them doing it from a safe distance. You can take a step back from the oven. Make sure you're not too near it so you don't get hurt. But your adult should be doing this. Okay, you can do all of the rest. There's everything else you can do. And then the after bit is a really fun bit because we have to eat it. So everything else that we've done today you can do, but this bit really you must, must, must make sure that your adult puts this in. I'm going to open up my oven really carefully. Pop my pizza in. I'm not putting it on the top, top shelf. I'm putting it in the middle shelf because I don't want it to get burnt. Okay. And then we are going to wait now. We are going to wait for 10 minutes in total. As I said, I want to check mine first. I was going to put my timer on, but that's, sadly that has died. So I'm going to put my timer on here and I will show you my timer. So I'm going to do it for eight minutes and then I am going to check on it. It's already counting down. Okay, and then we'll come back together. We'll check on our pizza and then maybe we can have a little taste test. See how yummy your pizza is. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Bye. Okay, so now my pizza's been on for 10 minutes in total. So I looked at the pizza at eight minutes just to make sure to see if it was done and it wasn't quite ready because the cheese hadn't fully melted and it wasn't as brown as I would like it to be. So it's quite good to check on it as you go along rather than waiting the whole 10 minutes and then checking on it. Have a little check around eight minutes just to see if it's ready or not. But I wanted it in for a little bit longer so I've got 30 seconds left and then I can take my pizza out. So it's really exciting and I cannot wait to taste it. I think it's gonna be delicious. All that cheese, yum. Okay, so let's have a little look at my pizza, at my mouse pizza. Okay. Remember this bit should be being done by your adult again, the taking out of the oven. All of this ooh, should be done by your adult. So they're gonna close here, okay? And then they're gonna turn the oven off, like that. So it's all off, because we don't need it anymore. Pop our pizza on the side. We are going to need to let it cool down. Remember that this will be very hot. The baking tray and your pizza is going to be very, very hot. So your adult is the only one that should be touching it at this point, okay? And then as it is cooled down for a little bit, I'll probably wait a few minutes, three to five minutes, just to make sure it's really cooled down. And then your adult can help you transfer your pizza onto a plate and you can get eating the most exciting bit. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what my mouse looks like. <coughs> all cooked and ready to eat. I am very pleased with it. Its eyes have gone a little bit wonky woo, but I still think that's a mighty good mouse and a mighty cheesy mouse. So I'm very happy with my pizza. Okay, 
Oh, thank you so much for cooking with Miss Whitefoot. I hope you enjoyed it. I really have. It was a new trial to see if I could cook with you and I think it went very well. So enjoy creating and eating your mouse pizza and I look forward to seeing you very soon.